the loop takes about an hour, it's about 50 kilometres. And what we'll do is try and um, stop and start at various points, talk you through the traction control um, and ABS settings that are available for the bike, and also talk about um, some of the suspension and features of the, of the bike throughout that time. Tubeless rims, look at that, that's how adventure bikes should be. Low fender though. Yeah, 18 litre tank, so theoretically you're getting, you know, High threes, early 400k range um, without too much stress. And then the other yeah. big ergo thing that we've noticed is with the seat being so flat, if you have a look at where the actual yep. tank sits in the frame, yep. you take that off, right? Yep. The tank's actually sitting super low in that frame oh, assembly. Yeah. Johnny said that to me before. Yeah, Can we so, pop the seat off one? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the other thing that's super interesting oh, yeah. is airbox access. So, yep. you know, important thing for Australia, if you take yep. off those fasteners there, yep. right? Four screws. Four yep. screws. You're at the top of the airbox. Yeah, right. Yep. So then you've got the airbox screws. Yep. And, really and good, you can see where the pickup point so is that's for the, the fuel, fuel pump. That's, yeah, the, fuel that's pump. the fuel pump. And yeah, okay. So we're, so the tank is sort of, is this shape, is it? Yeah, so it actually, is, it sits down and really sits into that frame. And a lot of the volume in the tank is actually under here. Yeah, so right. So yep. it's about getting that weight really, really low. Yep. Yeah. Um, so if you've ever gone into trying to make it lightweight, like standard, it's a pretty lightweight lithium battery. If you look at the size of the oh. battery, like it's a really oh, small... stock is a lithium battery. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So the shape of the seat and the fact that you can get a long way forward is medium. It's more like traditional dirt bike ergos. Yeah. Yep. Where you're, you, can, you could be sitting down quite happily and it's no drama to ride, whereas the sun bikes with the tank sitting there, you're sitting so far back that unless you're counter steering and standing up, things really, really hard to do. Yep. So yep. what we found is that's that's a massive improvement, and not only can you get the weight back, but then obviously conversely, it's the same thing. You can slide your weight yeah. off. And, and Brake pedal's actually dispersible as well. So if you have a look here, oh, yeah. so you can, you can drop take it, those out and lower. flip it up. So that's actually in the low setting now. If you flip it, it's ah, in the high setting. Yes, right. Yep. So there's an owner's code for it as well. Theoretically, if um, if you lost your key for the bike, oh, yeah. with the right know-how, Yep. You you can enter the code and actually open the ECU using the code. Oh, so you right. can start the bike yep. without the chip in the key ah. with the right know-how yep. and actually be able to ride away. So you get that owner's code, which, yep. look, it's not the end of the world. It's probably more relevant when you have fobs and you're losing, yeah, losing yeah. key fobs. But if you did lose the key, it's, yep. um, it's entirely likely you can do that. And they braided lines too. Yep. Yep. Standard braided lines, Brembo braids. Yep. The, the engine's actually common... Common to the 660 RS and the 660 Toronto with a different head. Yeah, right. Yep. So um, the tune, it's interesting what you say about mid range because that's exactly what the tune was intended for. So yep. they're making about 100 horsepower. Yep. So it's a common bottom end. Everything's pretty much the same. It's just tuned for that mid range, um, slightly shorter gear ratios as well. Yep. Um, so you're kind of sitting in that mid range more. Harrison yep. of the two. Definitely the, the foot pegs are about 10 mil higher on here. The lining up the seat, um, the bars are pretty similar. The screen's a lot closer on the T7. The screen sits further away here. Um, there's definitely more seat in front of you because of the tank design. Whereas I, except my tank bags there, I run out of seat pretty quick. So the, the distance from here to here is only you know, a bit more than the wolf horns. On this one, <laughs> it's double that. Uh, so, yeah. This is more room to move around on the seat. Gives it a bit more of a cushy seat. Yeah. Pretty nice machine though. Okay, here we are with the Touareg 660. Stats to be advised. Okay, so we're off on a uh, Touareg ride. Um, interesting, it's a, I don't know if this is the thing of the future, it's a paid ride, you know, you pay 30 bucks, you get a t-shirt and something, but uh, I guess, you know, it covers insurance and, you know, if, if it enables, if it lets us uh, get test rides of bikes, then fair enough. Okay, how's it feel? Well, the dash feels a long way away. This is quite an open, very open space. If that screen that screen does not look adjustable i don't think it's adjustable i don't really know anything about this bike i haven't watched any videos on it so a completely fresh opinion so uh our lead rider is um lukey luke <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, I've been for a few rides with Lukey Luke back in the day. Not big rides, like just stunting stuff. Um, I don't know if I've got any footage of it. If I do, I'll find some. Here he is as a youngster. <laughs> Odometer. It's only got 253 kilometers on the clock, okay. Okay, so we can just scroll up and down the menu with these buttons and oh, it has got cruise control. Is that easy? It's not too easy. I don't know how to work it. Oh, ATC disabled. Whoa, that's cool. Okay, so track control is disabled on the fly. Just pull this little lever. Oh, no. Go forwards. Yes, forwards turns it on. Hold it back. Disables. Oh, wish more bikes made it that easy. So yeah, the standing up position. It's pretty good. I'd probably just swivel the bars forward a little bit. But uh, it needs some knee gripping pads too. But um, otherwise, pretty comfy. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> you have like stalled it, mate. Whoop. Yeah, just on the low side. Yeah. <laughs> Feels alright. Geez, there's some noise through the airbox, isn't there? Have you opened the throttle and it'll bop? No. Nah. Oh, you hear airbox noise. Yeah, right. How was the windscreen for your height? Much property? No, I didn't feel anything. You guys are cool spider boats. Awesome. Oh yeah. So I'm surprised how easy it is. And then uh, tracks control on and off with this one? Yeah, and so if I could just show you, if you turn it on. Yeah. Hold it. I didn't know how to get cruise control on though. Yeah, you've got to push it across to the left. Oh, uh, across to the left. And then it um, so if you go to off-road mode now, yep. using the mode button. You'll see there's ATC off there. Yep. So you can literally just toggle up the fourth being the highest level of intervention down to first and if you hold it, it'll turn it off. Yep. That's now front ABS on, rear ABS is off. Oh yeah, yep. You can turn front off if you need it. Yep. And it'll stay in that mode. So if you kill the bike completely, turn it on again, it'll yep. stay there and hold it in whatever your personalized level of intervention is. Yeah, right, yep. No problem. Perfect. It's how bikes should be. Pretty easy, actually, isn't it? <laughs> There's a fair, fair few ways to overcomplicate it. Yeah. Yep. Um, if you if you want to hang back at all and give yourself some distance with the group, it'll be a super steady pace. I'm sweeping. If you want to have a flow through at the end, I'm totally cool with Yep. It. No worries. Let me know. Okay. okay. Yeah, cool, I don't know. Must. If you want to go slow. Yeah. So you can wrap back for a bit. Okay, so there's heaps of traction control there. <laughs> okay, we'll bring it down. Three, two, we'll try two. So zero wheel spin on four. Still very little on one. We'll go to off. Okay, so this is what Mark's talking about, the uh, airbox induction sound. So the ABS is on on the front, the 
As soon as you're in off-road, I think the ABS is off in the back, but it doesn't... Oh yeah, there is a warning, sorry. That's that yellow sign there, which is actually not very bright. I actually wasn't sure if the ABS was off unless I turned that. So if I hold that down, a rear ABS and ATC disabled. But it's disabled in off-road already. Anyway, there's modes. <laughs> Which, look, I, I know I've bought a Tenere with no modes. But, um... Yeah, look, I, I know that I, I ride a Tenere and I, I like it because of its no modes. But I'm not, I'm not against modes, I'm against failure and not being able to ride it with the modes, you know, inactive. And really to know that, I know, talk to someone at Prilia or, or buy one and then pull some sensors off and see what happens. Disconnect the dash, see if it'll start. That was, yeah, some of my, my big concerns. Um, with with bikes that are full of electronics but i mean they are definitely nice to haves i mean it's very comfortable <laughs> there's no doubt about it the bike is is comfortable feels pretty easy to ride the handlebars are wide this these are definitely wider than uh, than the tenere Um, and so, you know, steering input's pretty easy. The seat, it feels pretty low. It's wide, it's soft, it's comfortable. And there's certainly plenty of power out of this motor. I, I don't know what the horsepower is. I, I think it'd be similar. Is it similar to the T7? It might be a bit more, I think. It feels pretty similar. Motor's got a, a few more vibrations, a, l a little bit more vibey. I can feel it definitely in the in the crotch. The there's not really any vibrations in the hands. I guess it's probably they've probably got a rubber thick in there somewhere. Man, Melbourne has copped some rain lately. Got big floods. All the major rivers are in flood. an hour we're doing four and a half thousand I'd say that the engine characteristics are pretty similar to the to the t7 um, it's it's definitely not the same you know the the t7 definitely feels like a dirt bike right it's tall skinny the bars are reasonably narrow and it just, it feels, yeah, it just, the T7, I've got to sit back on my T7 now. I've got to sit next one back to the other. Um, the T7 definitely feels like a dirt bike. This definitely feels a bit more plush. Actually almost reminds me with these bars of like the BMW 650s. It's a bit more that, that style in seating, but the motor is much nicer, obviously. for all bikes to have um, ABS these days. In fact, it's mandatory above everything above uh, 125cc. But the key is how do the riding modes relate to that level of intervention and how do they make it appropriate for the riding context, so off-road, on-road, sporty riding, not sporty riding. So we're going to show that to you today. Lukey is a professional stunt rider. So the good thing about having a professional stunt rider is he's great um, demonstrating this to you. The bad thing is he doesn't always listen. Straight away, it's not on me, it's on him. And this is the tricky stuff, right? On-road is fine, off-road is fine. It's when you have gravel washed across corners, etc., like that. That's what catches a lot of adventure riders out. So what Luke is going to do, yeah, true. he's going to head up here, come down, no ABS on, right? And see what happens. Very few people can beat that ABS system. 
Tom Donnelly's doing our try and prize. He can do it too. But uh, let's see how we No, they can't. His rider inputs in the ability to steer around something, probably not much. No, but, but I could still turn the bike around if you guys notice. Generally can change direction. Yeah, good talk. I mean that's accurate. But um Yeah, that's that, that's accurate that you know what what traction control and ABS does. The only thing is I disagree that someone can beat it. Modern ABS pff, no. No one can beat it. It's uh, I watched a video recently which explained it really well, and um, it 100% cannot be beaten. It's physically impossible. Uh, I'll tell you what it was. Engineering explained. Our American guy who's getting old but looks like he's 15 still. Suspension feels pretty good. But then the Tenere feels good at this speed too. It's really, <laughs> it's really hitting whoopy stuff where, uh, where it really can start to have a big impact. I don't know what the suspension is on this. <laughs> I don't have to look up all the, all the stats later on. I'm just leaving a gap. Just, just make a gap or <laughs> jam on the brakes a few times. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Easy to ride. Feels to me more, more like the BMW 650, the wide bars, low seat, comfy seat. Yeah. The front of the seat, it, this bit of it is almost useless because you can't move, I guess if you're in the squat position, a bit of, uh, bit of testicular padding <laughs> there, maybe, because you can't sit on it. I mean, it, it sort of slopes up really vertical, but oh, cool. What's he saying? What's he saying? Go left. Yeah, I think there's something up here. Um, cool, we're on adventure bikes. We should be able to go down there. The few electronics are all the same, I think, on modern bikes. They, yeah. Uh, very similar to the Africa with the traction control level. All the options, yeah. But the fact you can turn the front ABS off will keep a lot of people happy, but... Yeah, definitely. Hello. <laughs> yeah, the gearbox on the Touareg was a bit um, stiff, but I just figured because they're new bikes, they only got 300 kilometers on them, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, I, I really like my T7. I, I think it's going to take a lot for me to change from this bike. Especially now that I've sort of got it set up, I really like my suspension. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, just like you said, just, uh, you know, I just jump over those couple of jumps and I'm like, just feels perfect. <laughs> I bet. Well, to, to be honest, I even like it more than. Sorry, Johnny. I like it more than your he, John, Johnny's 690. <laughs> uh. <laughs> 
Oh, nice! That looked cool. <laughs> Tracked it through the mud. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Well, adventurers, that was the Touareg 660. Uh, final thoughts? Uh, to be honest, I don't know if it's any better or any worse than any other bike in the category. I said to a few guys there that pretty much all modern adventure bikes, all the ones in that category for sure, are pretty good. You can't really go too wrong. Uh, would uh, Do I think it's better than the T7? I'd have to say no. I really like my T7. I like how I've set it up especially for the price that I paid for the T7. Now the T7's gone up in price a bit. Look, if you like the Aprilia brand, then I'd say it's it's an absolutely fine bike. Uh, you do have the electronics. Some people like them, some people don't. I'm only sort of concerned for our massive Outback trips that they're a liability, which is one of the reasons I really like the, the T7. But um, Certainly for most riding around, not a problem at all. Is it better than the Desert X or the... No, the Tiger 900's heavier, isn't it? Um, you know, what, any of the other light ones, it's definitely better than a single cylinder. But uh, it's, um, yeah, good. If you like Aprilia, feel comfortable knowing it's probably a pretty good bike. But test ride one, they're offering, the, offering it. Um, what do you think about it, uh, Mark? Yes, so coming from an Africa, obviously it's a lot smaller, less power, but the power was okay. Yeah, they're all, they're all pretty similar specification of electronics these days, like all their modes. Someone, one of the guys I was talking to there actually said that um, he thought you know, he'd never ridden a bike with electronics and then he got a BMW and eventually worked it all out. It was a bit overwhelming at first. But now that he's used to it, every bike that he test ride, the electronics seem easy. They're all, all the same. So yeah, I guess that's a legitimate. Yeah. Now we didn't really get to ride it over big whoopee stuff, but for the type of rides ride that we did, it was definitely absolutely fine. I'd agree. Yeah, and, so, and what about you, Johnny? What do you think? Plush, yep. <laughs> Compared to that hard as a rock thing you're riding right now. <laughs> yep. Yes, keeps keeps all the settings, yep. No, yeah, 690 forever, yep. Uh, here I was just bagging single cylinders, but uh, yeah. Um, each man to his own. And of course, yeah, when you're making your own decision, you got to remember that, that you don't, don't listen to anyone else. You decide what sort of bike you like and you're going to enjoy it. Um, not really a motto of this channel, but it should be. Uh, if you like a bike, ride it. Don't let it sit in the shed, for God's sake. Oh, okay, well that's about all we've got to say. We're on our way home now. Looks like we're about to get dumped on with rain again. Ah, oh, Australia at the moment is uh, loving La Nina. Every major river is flooded. We actually have to come home this way because the main highway is flooded. The, <laughs> Mark and I pulled up to the guys and said, oh yeah, look, it says road closed, but how closed is it? And he goes, oh, it's about this deep. And we're like, oh, okay. We're not riding through that. So uh, yes, good, good times. Anyway, catch you all later, boy.